Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Open Source Tonight. Folks, today what I'm going to show you is how you can create your very own video files in whatever format you need, pretty much within reason, if it supports FFmpeg, pretty much. Then you can do so with an open source GUI called, say it with me, Handbrake. Let's go take a look. So this is Handbrake right here. And right now you can see I have one of my shorts in here, two minutes, 45 seconds worth. And I'm going to show you how we can encode using FFmpeg. So if you want to do this with uh, the old fashioned way of doing this from the command line with FFmpeg directly, this is basically just automating FFmpeg. So you can pretty well do that. And I usually do prefer to do that, but we're going to show this for the people that want to use a GUI. So there's all these different tabs here and we'll go through most of these. And so first of all, I've already got a input video here. So you can hit open source and find your video in here. You can see this is a video that uh, I did from one of my short films. You can see here I've got digital cinema package tests, a promo, interviews, sound mix cleanup, images, all kinds of stuff. And we're going to just open that file up. You can see it tells me the frame rate is 23.976 frames per second. I'm at 2K resolution. At, uh, in the scope format, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And it's already figured that kind of stuff out for us. Here it is two, three, nine to one display aspect ratio. We can come in here and we can resize. We can do whatever we want. We can change a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to come in here. We're going to say constant frame rate. I'm going to pick our frame rate here, 23.976. You can actually tune your video codec, depending on what you're using, to different things. And I'm going to show you how to use AV1 today. So we can either use AV1 8-bit, which is this, or AV1 10-bit. We're going to just do 8-bit today. But just so you know, you can also select H.265 with the NVENC encoder for your NVIDIA cards. You can use software encoding up here as well with H.264 uh, and the uh, X.264, so forth. You can do MPEG-2. You know, you get the idea. There's different things we can encode. I'm going to select AV1, and we're going to use the SVT AV1 that's more accelerated. I don't even know if they give you the older version in FFmpeg, but if they do, or in uh, Handbrake, but if they do, then you can, you know, say otherwise. So you can tune different things here. You can put some more settings in here, and this will actually be really nice to, uh, you can put stuff in here to tell it there's film grain and all this, if you want to try to preserve that. We're not going to talk about that today, but you can do that. I'm going to check fast decode so it decodes quicker. I'm going to select constant quality, and I'm going to select a quality here. Let's do, let's do like 22, for example, today. So this is like your CRF if you're using command line FFmpeg. It's the same idea, though. And this will basically adjust the bitrate and stuff to get us a good quality. So we're going to leave that alone. And we can come over to our audio, and we can encode our audio into whatever we want. If we want to change it, we can click this little icon here. And so again, we've got 2.0 and 5.1 in this. I did a video about this, the last video that actually talked about that. So I can come in here and I can actually encode it into different things. So I can do Dolby Surround, same sample rate, same gain, all of that. And I could put that in like AC3, for example, for 5.1, whatever. I could just do straight stereo, which is what we're going to do today. So I'm going to select my two-channel stereo, leave everybody the same, and just save it. But again, you could do more. So I could come in here and do both the 5.1. And let's see, 5.1, 5.1 channels. And we could do, yeah, we'll just leave it as AAC. Why not? And there you go. And so now I've got both of those. I can hit reload, and that will actually get rid of the... Uh, the other one, I'm going to come in here. Actually, what's at all do? I bet it does both of them. Out of, yeah, it does what I wanted anyway, if I want both of them. Cool. All right. So we got that in there. I learned something about it myself today. You, you know, you want to talk about filters, you can use some of this stuff sometimes. Like if you know you need to color convert it for some reason, maybe you have uh, a Rec 709 monitor you want to view, something that was in Rec 2020, you can convert. 
So, you know, we can do cropping, but most of this stuff you're going to just leave as is. So at this point, we're pretty much ready. So I'm going to show you how we can add it to the queue because I'm going to show you this. We can actually have more than one video. So I'm going to say add to queue. You can see one encode is pending. Let's open somebody else. And well, you know what? Let's use AV1 as a source. So this is AV1. And you can see the colors look different here because the color space is not the same. But that's OK. So we can encode it into something else. And also, I should point out, we can encode this into different files, too. Right? So let's make this a WebM just for demo purposes. And we'll just save it as testing.webm. And we're going to leave our dimensions the same. In this case, it's actually just regular 1080. Most of our settings have come over. We're going to leave all that alone. This has stereo sound. We're going to leave all that alone. And now I can hit add to the queue. Oh, hold on a minute. Audio none. Why is it set as none? Oh, hold on, because I think it's only got 5.1. And can we not down mix? Hold on. That's weird. I don't think we can. Shouldn't we be able to down mix? Maybe I have to call it like 2.0 or something. I have to have a name in there. No. I don't know what his problem is. OK, uh, 48 samples. So that still says nothing. OK, I think I may have encoded this either without audio or audio that's not proper. If we just leave that out, we should be able to encode. And we can. All right. So we got two videos that are in the queue to be encoded. And I can open up my queue by going up to the queue menu up here. And I can start encoding right here. And I can click this encoding box over here in the menus. And just like that, I can see both of my video files, all the settings, an activity log. And I can hit this start button right here. So let's do it. I'm going to hit start. And as soon as I do that, it's going to start. And there it goes. You can see it's encoding. And if we open up our CPU utilization, you can see that SVT uses our CPU pretty hard. This is a Ryzen 3700X, so a decently fast process for running Linux. On top of it right now, Rocky Linux 9. And I can tell you right now that the encoding efficiency is a lot better than doing it with the reference AV1 uh, encoder. We're going a little bit faster than real time at about 25, 26 frames per second here. And we're already about 20% done with our encode of this first video. And then once that's done, it will automatically do our second video and so forth. And we can even look at the activity log here and we can see if you're somebody like me and you actually know what to do with this information, you can look at it and keep track of what's going on. If we scroll down some more, you can see that this is actually showing us the encoder and everything that it's doing. We can come over to statistics, and that's a great screen as well. And one thing I do like about this that you don't get with regular FFmpeg, at least not unless you put a script around it or something to time it, it actually times the encode time. So you can start this up, walk away, and then you can know, well, what time did that video finish encoding? Maybe you're encoding, you know, a relatively long video or something to upload to YouTube with this uh, from a higher quality format into something YouTube would prefer. And when you do that, you, you might want to know how long it took, right? Well, now you can. So, and as you can see, our encode time is about two minutes and 40 seconds right now. And I believe that is how long it's going to take to finish the encode. So it will work its way through the jobs one at a time. We're about 60 something percent through the encode. But anyway, I'm not going to make you wait for all of this to encode. The moral of the story is, is that it will encode it for you. And we can actually encode in the background so I can minimize my cue. And I can even open like my preview here. So you can do this if you want to see what it's going to look like. So you can see this is what the film looks like if that we play it back right now. And again, the color space isn't going to be right, but we could have converted that. But the point of the matter is that our encoding is actually almost on open the act, uh, the not the activities. Let's open up the uh, encoding queue back up here and you can see that our encode is likely to finish and there it is it just finished you can see the little green checkbox it finished at 245 19 seconds started at 242 so 
relatively quick in code. When it's done, you can have it show notifications down here with the queue. It can do nothing. It can quit Handbrake. It can put the computer to sleep or it can shut down the computer. I like the idea of it showing a notification if I'm going to use Handbrake for this activity of encoding some video because I generally want to leave my computer on after it's done so I can come back and play it immediately, that kind of thing. But, you know, if you want to shut it down, if you're going to bed or something, you want to just let the thing encode, you could always do that. And as you can see, it's encoding the second video now as well. So, folks, I hope you all enjoyed that. You can install FFmpeg. I keep wanting to say FFmpeg. You can install Handbrake, excuse me, by using sudo apt install Handbrake. Uh, I believe if you are on Rocky, you have to do it. I think I did it with a flat package. I believe it's in the flat hub, so you can get it that way. Should be in the Snap uh, Crafters stuff as well if you want to install it via Snap. Yeah, it's basically everywhere. Handbrake is a great tool. And even if you're on Windows and Mac, don't worry. You can actually install Handbrake if you didn't already know on there as well. So if you need to encode some video and you want a little GUI tool to make it easy, queue up a bunch of videos and walk away and let it encode. Now you can with Handbrake. Everybody, I hope that that give you a helping hand. Thanks for watching. And until next time, goodbye, everybody. And action.